Next morning, he bounded out of bed and rushed to the kitchen. The washing up was so dismally real that Bilbo was forced to believe the party of the night before had not been part of his bad dreams, as he had rather hoped. The dwarves had gone. He began to whistle loudly, trying to forget all about them, when in walked Gandalf. My dear fellow, said he, whenever are you going to come? They left you a message because they could not wait. What message? said poor Mr. Baggins, all in a fluster. Great elephants! If you had dusted the mantelpiece, you would have found this just under the clock, said Gandalf, handing Bilbo a note. And this is what Bilbo read. Thorin and company to burglar Bilbo, for your hospitality, our sincerest thanks, and for your offer of professional assistance, our grateful acceptance. Terms, cash on delivery, up to and not exceeding one fourteenth of total profits, if any, all travelling expenses guaranteed in any event, funeral expenses to be defrayed by us or our representatives. Thinking it unnecessary to disturb your esteemed repose, we have proceeded in advance to make requisite preparations and shall await your respected person at the Green Dragon Inn, Bywater, at 11 a.m. sharp, trusting that you will be punctual. We have the honour to remain yours deeply, Thorin and Company. That leaves you just ten minutes. You will have to run, said Gandalf. But, said Bobo. No time for it, said the wizard. But, said Bobo again, no time for that either. Off you go. Pushing his keys into Gandalf's hands and running as fast as his furry feet could carry him down the lane, past the great mill, across the water, Bilbo was very puffed when he got to buy water, just on the stroke of eleven. Bravo, said Balin, looking at him. Just then, all the others came round the corner of the road from the village. They were on ponies, and each pony was slung about with all kinds of baggages, packages, parcels, and paraphernalia. There was a very small pony, apparently for Bilbo. Hope you get, and off we go, said Thorin. I'm awfully sorry, said Bilbo, but I have come without my hat, and I have left my pocket handkerchief behind, and I haven't got any money. Don't worry, said Dwaylin. You will have to manage without pocket handkerchiefs and a good many other things before you get to the journey's end. So, on a fine May morning, they jogged off from the inn on laden ponies, Bilbo wearing a dark green hood and a dark green cloak borrowed from Dwaylin. They had not been riding very long when up came Gandalf, very splendid on a white horse. He had brought a lot of pocket handkerchiefs and Bilbo's pipe and tobacco. At first, they passed through the green fields of the Hobbit lands. Then they came into the Lone Lands, where there were no people left, no inns, and the roads grew steadily worse. Not far ahead were dreary hills, rising higher and higher, dark with trees. Everything seemed gloomy and dull. To think it will soon be June, grumbled Bilbo as he splashed along behind the others in a very muddy track. It was after tea time, he was soaked, his hood was dripping into his eyes, his cloak was full of water, the pony was tired and the others were too grumpy to talk. I'm sure the rain has got into the dry clothes and into the food bags, thought Bilbo. Bother burgling and everything to do with it. I wish I was at home in my nice hole by the fire with a kettle just beginning to sing. It was not the last time that he wished that. It began to get dark as they went into a deep valley with a river at the bottom. At last they stopped. Thorin muttered something about supper and finding a dry patch to sleep on. Not until then did they notice that Gandalf was missing. Just when a wizard would have been most useful too, groaned Dorian Nori. They decided in the end that they would have a camp where they were. Dwarves can make a fire almost anywhere, but they could not do it that night. There they all sat, glum and wet and muttered. Bilbo was sadly reflecting that adventures are not all pony rides in May sunshine when Balin said, There's a light over there. There was a hill some way off, thick with trees. Out of the dark mass they could see a light shining, a reddish, comfortable looking light, as it might be a fire or torches twinkling. Now it is the burglar's turn, said Thorin. You must go on and find out all about that light, and if all is perfectly safe, come back quick. If not, 
Come back if you can. If you can't, hoot twice like a barn owl and once like a screech owl and we will do what we can. Off Bilbo had to go before he could explain that he could not hoot even once like any kind of owl any more than fly like a bat. But at any rate, hobbits can move quietly in woods. So, naturally, he got right up to the fire, for fire it was, without disturbing anyone. And this is what he saw. Three very large persons sitting around a very large fire of beech logs. They were toasting mutton on long spits of wood and licking the gravy off their fingers. Also, there was a barrel of good drink. But they were trolls. Even Bilbo could see that. <laughs> 